Hi and welcome to Thimico. In this lesson, we will practice what we have learned about constraint equations and their formulation. By the end of the video, we expect you to have picked up the general methodology we will use in our course to obtain the constraint equations of a multibody system. Let's start with a simple pendulum. Notice how this simple pendulum moves and which are its degrees of freedom. One of the characteristics of a simple pendulum is that it is only able to rotate around point O. At point O, the revolute constraint or joint between the bar of the pendulum and the ground is located. We know from our previous lessons that a revolute joint only allows one rotation and restricts the translations. Now we also know that the full set of generalized coordinates to describe the pendulum's movements are three because this is a planar movement and we have just one body, the bar of the pendulum. Let's bring an inertial or global coordinate system attached to the ground at point O, which will be our origin to measure the different positions of the mechanism. Next, a body coordinate system with origin point P and the x-axis aligned with the longitudinal axis will be placed in the center of the bar. Since we only have one moving body, the maximum number of generalized coordinates is 3. These are the translations of the origin of the body reference system along the x and y directions of the inertial reference frame. And the rotation of the body reference system with respect to this inertial reference system is represented by the angle theta a. We can represent these generalized coordinates in a vector. Q equals Rxa RyA theta a transpose. Our next step consists of expressing each one of the constraints in words before doing it mathematically. Just try to understand the problem. Let's do it. The characteristic of the pendulum is that it rotates around point O. It means that the end of the pendulum is kept fixed on top of the point O. The fact that the end of the pendulum will not translate or move with respect to the point O is the foundation to construct the constraint equation. To enforce the constraint of zero displacement, we say that the position of the point O measured from the pendulum reference system must be equal at all times to the position of the point O measured from our ground body. The position of point O measured from the pendulum reference system can be written as Ra plus Aa u bar Ao and the position of the point O measured from the ground body can be written as Ro plus Ao u bar Oo. Then our constraint vector can be formulated as Ra plus Aa u bar Ao minus Ro plus Ao u bar Oo equals zero. We can transform this vector equation into Let's simplify this. First, we know that the origin of the ground body reference system coincides with the origin of the inertial frame of reference. This causes the term u bar x bar oo u bar y bar oo to be equal to 0, 0 because there is no distance between the point under study and the origin of the ground body reference system. And second, we know that the term rxo ryo is also equal to 0, 0 because that's exactly the point we have taken as the origin for our calculations. Then our constraint equation vector transforms into rxa ryA plus cos theta a minus sine theta a sine theta a cos theta a times u bar x bar a o u bar y bar a o equals zero zero. Or written in scalar terms, c1 is rxa plus u bar x bar a o cos theta a minus u bar y bar a o sine theta a equals zero. c2 is r y a plus u bar x bar a o sin theta a plus u bar y bar a o cos theta a equals zero. To make things more practical, if we say that the length of the pendulum bar is L and the thickness is negligible, then we could write these equations using the body position vector of point O with respect to P as u bar x bar a o u bar y bar a o equals minus L by 2, zero. Then we end up with the following final constraints. C1 is Rxa minus L by 2 cos theta A equals 0. C2 is RyA minus L by 2 sin theta A equals 0. Now you can verify that the resultant coordinates are functions of the pendulum's generalized coordinates, as stated before. Nice! You might notice that the generalized coordinates of the ground body are not needed here. In case of the simple pendulum, we were able to select the global coordinate frame to coincide with the ground body. 
which helped us derive simpler constraints. In complex mechanisms, this may not always be possible. Thanks for watching and see you soon.